Hello everyone, in this video we will discuss about anticoagulants. In the previous video we discussed about collection of the blood. This is the second video in practical hematology series. Going to what are the anticoagulants? Firstly in this video we will discuss about few of the anticoagulants then we will discuss the color coding of the tubes and, the, and uh, certain more points. Okay, now going to the anticoagulants which are used in hematological investigations. These are EDTA, we have heparin, we have double oxalate, we have trisodium citrate. Firstly, discussing the EDTA. EDTA stands for ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid. Now, the EDTA it is the recommended anticoagulant which is used in routine hematological investigations. So, in every hemat investigation, we will use EDTA always we will use edta only but there are some exceptions you have you have to remember it that way now there is disodium salt of edta there is dipotassium salt of edta but because dipotassium edta is more soluble this is mostly recommended the mechanism of action of edta is chelation of sodium it chelates so, uh, uh, sorry it chelates calcium and it acts as an anticoagulant now uh, it is uh, the concentration of EDTA use is 1.5 mg per ml of the blood and this proportion of anticoagulant should be maintained because if we use the EDTA in excess, we use in excess of 2 mg per ml, it will cause sun changes like uh, it will cause shrinkage and degenerative changes in the red blood cells and the white blood cells, it will decrease the PCV and it will also cause fragmentation of pla platelets which will cause uh, high platelet count. So the reading will be disturbed, the reading will not be accurate. So EDTA should be used in accurate quantities only. Now what is EDTA used for? But uh, before that, what is EDTA not used for? EDTA is not used for the coagulation studies. Okay, you have to remember it that way. EDTA is used for, it is used for hemoglobin estimation, hematocrit, cell counts, making of the blood films, reticulocyte count and hemoglobin electrophoresis. And now, uh, let's discuss some of the changes which occur after prolonged storage of blood in EDTA. Uh, if we store the blood uh, after uh, for prolonged duration in EDTA, it will cause spherocytic change in uh, spherocytic change in red blood cells. So, if you find spherocytosis in slides uh, in blood films, you should uh, look for that if the blood is not prolonged, uh, is not stored for long duration in EDTA. Uh, also, there can be separation of nuclear lobes. There can be vacuolation in the cytoplasm in case of WBCs. In PCVs, it can cause increased PCV. So, some changes can occur if the EDTA is, uh, if the blood is stored for a prolonged duration. Now, going to the second of the anticoagulant, that is heparin. Now, heparin, it acts by uh, enhancing the activity of antithrombin-3. Now, antithrombin-3, it inhibits the thrombin and this way it acts as an anticoagulant. Now, heparin, it is used for uh, osmotic fragility tests as it doesn't alter the size of the cells. Osmotic fragility test, if you remember, is used for hereditary spherocytosis. It is used in uh, that. Uh, and also it is used for amino phenotyping and heparin should not be used for routine hematological investigations it should not be used for total leukocyte count or cell counts it should not be used for making of blood films as it gives a bluish background so it is used for only uh, those two things only now there is a other anticoagulant which is known as double oxalate. Now double oxalate is also known as Wintrobe's mixture. Now why it is known as double oxalate? Because it contains two type of oxalate. There is an ammonium oxalate, there is a potassium oxalate and the proportion is 3 is to 2. Now why two oxalates are used? Because we have to maintain the, uh, the size of red blood cells. The ammonium oxalate it causes the swelling of red blood cells. However, the potassium oxalate it causes shrinkage and when we use this in proportion this causes uh, this will lead to proper size we can estimate the accurate side of size of the red blood cells now uh, as this uh, the double oxalate is also known as Wintrobe's mixture you can remember it that way that it is used for estimation of ESR by Wintrobe's method now the ESR it can be 
be estimated either by Winthrop's method or Westergren's method. We will uh, see in Westergren's method which anticoagulant is used, but a uh, for the Winthrop's method double oxalate is used. It can also be used for routine hematological investigations also. Now going to the th uh, the trisodium citrate. Now the trisodium citrate it is used for ESR estimation by Westergren's method. Now Westergren's method ESR estimation you will use trisodium citrate. Also for population studies trisodium citrate is used. But the proportion uh, is different. If uh, we have to do population studies, we have to use 1 is to 9 proportion. That is 1 part is of anticoagulant and 9 parts is of blood. However, for ESR estimation, 1 is to 4 proportion is used. Okay? This is important to remember. Now, sometimes plain tubes are used when there is no anticoagulant is added. It is mostly used for biochemistry studies. The biochemistry test, where is, um, if you have uh, no biochemistry test, mostly like liver function test, the renal function test, we have calcium, lipid profile, the electrolytes, the hormone levels, the serum osmolality, these all tests. These all tests are mostly used without any anticoagulant. No anticoagulant is used in these. Because we have to uh, estimate the levels of uh, liver, uh, the total proteins, the blood, urea, nitrogen, the creatinine level in the serum. And to uh, get the serum, the, uh, the clotting process should uh, take place. So, plain tubes are used for biochemistry tests mostly. Now, fluoride. Fluoride is used, it is uh, not an anticoagulant, it is a special ingredient which is added along with the anticoagulant, mostly EDTA. It is used for blood glucose estimation. Now, why fluoride is added to uh, when we have to check for blood glucose level? Because fluoride it uh, inhibits glycolysis, and when it inhibits in glycolysis, the blood sugar level, the blood glucose level, what you estimate is accurate. Because if you will keep the blood in uh, uh, we will store the blood it will lead to decrease in the blood glucose level by uh, the consumption of glucose by the rbc's so we need to inhibit uh, the glycolysis so sodium fluoride it inhibits the glycolysis so that the blood glucose level which you get is accurate now uh, there is color coding of the tubes color coding of the tubes is important when, uh, because whenever you get blood sample you have to uh, keep the sample in that color coded tube which is required for the tests. So, if uh, for the routine hematological investigations, you will use a lavender color tube uh, like this one. You can see it is a it is it, the top portion is colored purple, it is lavender in shape, and this uh, automatically uh, you will understand that it contains EDTA. So, it is used for routine hematological investigations. Now green, uh, which is uh, this one, is used for, uh, uh, is, it contains heparin. So if you have to send the blood for immunophenotyping, you will put the blood in this tube. The gray one, the gray topped one, it contains the sodium fluoride. That means it is used for blood glucose estimation. And similarly, the red one, it is plain. It doesn't contain any anticoagulant. The blue one contains sodium citrate and uh, the black one contains double oxalate. This is very important uh, um, to remember because it helps in uh, uh, the proper procedure of the laboratory. So this was all about the anticoagulants. If you like this video, do like, share and subscribe to this channel. Thanks for watching this video. Do ask any queries regarding this topic in the comment box. Thank you.